Hi, I'm Gina, and today I'm going to be walking you through how to use tools in AIP Logic, specifically object queries. Before we get started, a quick word from our founder. Discover how Palantir customers unlock more value from Foundry and AIP thanks to our live instructor-led trainings. We are Ontologize, a group of former Palantir engineers who love teaching. We've trained thousands of Palantir users at leading organizations around the world. Unlock the full potential of your Palantir deployment by going to ontologize.com. By the end of this exercise, you will have built the following function that can take in a user question, such as, what is the total quantity purchased from the United Kingdom? And when you hit run, it queries your ontology and uses the results that it gets back to give you a response that's grounded in your data. Now that we've discussed what we're building, let's do it. For our work today, we're going to use the online retail transaction records, which is a data set available on Kaggle. Let's download that and then hop over to Foundry. Starting from Foundry in the project or folder of your choice, hit New, Upload Files, choose from your computer, and grab that data set that you just downloaded. Hit Open. Make sure you hit Upload as a structured data set and hit Upload. Once the upload is complete, hit Done. Let's check out this data set. Click on it. Have an index column, an invoice number, a stock code, a description, a quantity, an invoice date, a unit price, a customer ID, and a country. Looking at the index, let's verify that this is going to be a proper primary key for us. Hit V stops. Here we have our summary statistics, and looking at the column statistics, we can see that that is going to be a valid primary key. This data set does not represent orders, rather, it represents line items of orders. Keep that in mind when we create our object type. To do that, click on All Actions, hit Create Object Type. That's a little shortcut, because now we're here in Ontology Manager, Use Existing Data Source is already checked, and the data set itself is selected. Hit Next. Give it a name, I'll give this a dollar sign, and I'll call this Gina Online Retail Line Item. Hit Next. The primary key is index. The title key will be invoice number. Hit Next. No actions needed here. Hit Create. Hit Save. And Save to Ontology. And Save Changes. The index process is now kicked off. And if you look at data sources, you can monitor the process of that index. We'll hang tight for a couple of minutes while we wait for that index to finish, and then we'll come right back and start building again. The index process has completed, and we're ready to hop into AIP Logic. Let's go do it. Hit Control J and search for AIP Logic. Click on AIP Logic. Hit New Logic. And call this one your name. Online orders expert. Essentially, this agent is going to be designed to answer high level summary questions about online orders and line items and how much of each product is getting ordered and all that. Hit save. Here we are in AIP Logic. We're going to keep this function simple. This function is going to take a string input and produce a string output. Along the way, we're going to run that through a large language model that calls a tool, specifically the object query tool. Hit add function inputs, and the input will be called user question. It's a string. The first block and only block that we're going to use is the use LLM block. Click on use LLM. The system prompt will say something like, you are an expert on our store's online sale performance. Given the user's question, and we can just put the question here instead of the task prompt. So comma forward slash grab that user question, respond using the 
tool that you are given will provide the tool in a friendly and helpful manner. Let's give it the tool. To give it the tool, hit add tool, hit query objects. That will allow the LLM to query the ontology. Click on query objects, hit add object. And the object is going to be the one we just created. So Gina, online retail line item, click on that. We have the option to allow different properties to be included or not allow certain properties and links. We don't have any links on this object type, but ontology queries can deal with links. So if you want it to query an object and its links, you can do that. There are two options for when you're using tools. Your options are prompted tool calling and native tool calling. The old way of doing things was prompted. The new way of doing things is native tool calling. In the old way, LLMs were writing instructions that would get parsed. And that worked a lot of the time, but sometimes those would fail. In the new way, LLMs directly output structured commands that execute reliably and in parallel. This is going to make AI agents much faster and more production ready. Let's do both and have a look at the difference so we can truly understand the difference. We'll start with prompted since that's the old way of doing things. For the user question, let's start by asking a question like, what is the total quantity purchased from the United Kingdom? Hit preview run, the debugger pops up and it's going to walk through what it's doing. Again, we're using prompted execution, which means that in the prompt, if we hit show raw, you'll see that we have the prompt that we wrote, but we also have a very long boilerplate prompt that describes to the large language models how to write queries against the ontology. So it's describing the object query tool. Notice that it's listing out the object properties and the object property descriptions. You can encode some useful metadata here in the future. If your LLM is not writing proper queries against your data, take note that that might be because the LLM doesn't know what the values of your columns are. Because of that, oftentimes it can write incorrect queries. You can use the property descriptions to help the LLM write better queries against your data. For example, in my question, I wrote, what is a total quantity purchased from the United Kingdom? But I could easily have said, what is the total quantity purchased from the UK? Most likely the LLM would have tried to write a query and filter the data for only UK records but it would have turned up a blank because there are no UK records, only United Kingdom. One way we could encode that information is in the ontology property description. You could say something like, for the countries, here are the countries that exist in this data set. Here are the countries that exist within this object set, and that can help it write a better query. We have very detailed instructions about how to use this tool, all the different operations it can use, filter, aggregate, order by, limit, example queries, and then instructions on what that final answer should look like. This is using chain of thought reasoning, so it's going to return with an intermediate thought and then a final answer, sometimes with multiple corrections along the way. If I look at the LLM tool use and hit show raw, I can see that a query has been written. We're using the object type tool. And then Foundry is going to run this query against the ontology backend. Finally, we have the LLM output. The total quantity purchased from the United Kingdom is about 4 million. Let's try native prompting. If you click on native and run the same query, hit preview run, you'll see it's substantially faster. But things look very different in the debugger. If you hit show raw, you won't see that boilerplate prompt that contains instructions on how to write a query. In the LLM tool use, you can't really see it here, but the LLM has outputted a structured command that is being rendered like this. The result is much lower token overhead and the ability to parallelize tool use. To see some hard, cold numbers to support this, let's compare some recent runs. At the very bottom, you can view recent preview runs. Hit the up arrow here. 
So we have one at 235, one at 232. This one was with prompted, and this one was with native. If you click on the one at 232, you can see it took five seconds. If we look at the most recent one, which was at 235, it took 3.9 seconds, which is not a small decrease in the amount of time. And that can be the benefit of using native tool calling over prompted tool calling. Now that we've authored our function, and we've tried out native tool calling and also prompted tool calling, we're ready to hit save and publish. Hit save and publish. Bind it to an ontology. So it's going to be ontologized public ontology for me and hit publish. What can we do next? We have a function that takes a string input and returns a string output. This is something that you could embed in workshop or also give to an agent, an AIP agent studio to call as a function. Those are your two options for deploying this. And that concludes our work. Thanks for watching. We hope you found this helpful. Let us know what other sort of ARP content you want to see next in the comments.